The eBags Motherload Weekender Convertible is a popular travel bag for a decent price. And I'm excited to dive into all of the little nitty gritty details with you in this review. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, where we use our expertise and real world experience to provide practical resources and honest opinions guiding you towards smarter travel. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's jump right into the eBags Motherload, a bag that Mark and I at Pack Hacker have been testing for the last two weeks in Detroit and Minneapolis. Let's jump in. Kicking it off with the overall look, the eBags Motherload overall just looks like a big travel backpack, which is exactly what it is. The main material, at least on the black version on the outside, is a polyester. Although eBags doesn't list it on their website, I think this is around 1,000 denier or 1,000 D, which is a decent fabric density for a bag of this size. There are some big silver zipper pulls on the exterior of this thing as well. A little bit much as far as the look goes in my opinion, and they do jingle around quite a bit, but at least they're easy to spot. Also, the bag can seem a little bit large when fully expanded. We're not the biggest fans of the look of this bag overall. However, beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. That's why we pulled our Instagram audience over at Pack Hacker to get their thoughts. We would love to have you involved in future polls, so if you wanna join, just follow at Pack Hacker on Instagram. At the time of this review, the eBags Motherload Weekender Convertible comes in an additional five colors compared to this solid black color that we have going on here. So those are Eggplant, which is kind of a purpley color, Heathered Graphite, Sage Green, Sinful Red, Sinful Red, all right, Tropical Turquoise, and solid black, which we have going on right here. We think that the black looks the best out of all the colorways. We think it looks a little bit more polished, a little more professional, and the other colorways look a little bit cheap in our opinion, but of course, your mileage may vary. From a branding perspective, there is a large gray embroidered e-bags logo at the bottom here, and there are a ton of e-bags logos on the zipper pulls as well. To wrap up the rest of the materials on this bag, we have some zoom zippers going on, which are lockable on the exterior. We have YKK buckles on the compression straps that are just really easy and satisfying to buckle. And then we have polyurethane for additional weather resistance. All the materials on this bag are pretty decent, but with the exterior and the interior liner, it kind of has a bit of a cheap feel to the bag overall. Kicking it off with the harness system, we haven't found it super comfortable under heavy loads. The shoulder straps themselves have some decent padding throughout and are decently thick and dense with foam. There are some plastic loops here to attach additional accessories to, and then we have this rail for the sternum strap that is hidden by this flap of polyester fabric. We like the sternum strap overall because there is some flexibility when you're wearing it based on the elastic going on here. So it's not just that stiff, piece of webbing across your body, has a little bit of give as well, so as you're walking and moving around, there's a bit of flex. The strap adjusters below are pretty straightforward. We just wish that there were elastic loops to hold the excess strap together a little bit more. Now onto the main part that makes this harness system uncomfortable, all of the plastic hardware going on down here. This sticks into my back as I'm wearing the bag and becomes uncomfortable after about 10 minutes of wear with a decently heavy loadout. Now I have a bit of a wider frame than Mark who didn't have this issue at all. So your mileage may vary based on your body type. I personally would not travel with this bag. The only other bag that I've had an issue with is the Amazon Basics Carry-On, which is eerily similarly designed to this bag as well. But other than that, really haven't run into this problem on any other bags. There is an option for an attachable waist belt here, which is pretty much a must with a bag of this size. However, the waist belt itself is flimsy and doesn't offer a lot in terms of support, and there's basically no padding on it whatsoever. The entire harness system itself detaches from the clips here, and you can stuff it into this portion on the top of the bag to hide away the straps if you'd like to keep a lower profile when you're boarding the airplane or train or something of that nature. I also like that you can see the reinforcement on these straps at the top here when you look inside of this zippered compartment. On the wearer's right hand side, there are an additional two clips if you would like to wear this duffel or shoulder bag style. 
Again, this is a pretty large bag to wear in that mode, especially if it's expanded, which we'll get into that feature in a second, but the option is there if you choose to use it. There are three very nicely padded handles here going on in the bag, one at the top, one in the wearer's right, and then one on the back of the bag as well. And these handles are pretty much perfect foam density, perfectly grabbable, and I like that the bag has some structure from this laptop frame sheet here and the front here, so it's a very good grab. On some other bags, there's a lot of excess fabric that kind of flaps around when you grab the bag here, but there is enough structure to this bag to where it just feels like a really good grab overall. There are two main ways to expand and compress the bag, and one are these straps on the outside. There are four of them in total. And then another one is this zipper expansion going on right here. The zippered expansion will add 1.5 inches to the interior of the bag so you can pack more inside. Then you can use these compression straps to fine tune the compression, whether that zippered compression is all the way zipped up or fully unzipped. These are kind of used to finely tune the compression once you have that zipper in place where you want it. Lastly, there is a sneaky pocket that holds two other external components, one being the water bottle pocket and another being the luggage identifier tag. When the water bottle pocket is out, overall it's pretty flimsy and doesn't have a lot of structure, meaning that water bottle is kind of gonna flap around on the side of your bag, but we do like the variable adjustable drawstring on the top that works well for water bottles of different sizes. And lastly, the luggage tag is visible from the exterior, which we really love, although it can be a little bit hard to get that card exactly inside and positioned correctly within the pocket. Kicking it off with the front pocket, it offers a diagonal zipper that opens right up for a decently sized stuff pocket. There's a seam opposite of the zipper at the same angle that adds some visual uniformity to the bag and helps with the flexibility of this pocket as well. The polyester fabric folds over the zipper coil here, which creates a nice seamless look, but it kind of sounds like you're going to rip the bag every time you zip and unzip this thing. Behind that pocket, there is a decently large U-shaped zipper that opens right up and offers some pretty ample space as well. The main compartment here is pretty much wide open except for a keychain that goes on here. We like that there is a metal clip going on for your keys, nice and solid. The orange interior does feel a little bit on the cheap side, but we like the color because it makes everything inside easier to spot, especially if you have darker colored gear. Let's flip it over so we can take a look at the back flap. There's some decent organization going on here. So there are two levels of zippered pockets that go all the way down to the bottom of the flap. I like that these zipper pulls are positioned on each side of the bag. So the top one is on the left, the bottom one is on the right. And then we have this mesh zippered pocket where the zipper is positioned on the left-hand side. So all the zippers here kind of stay apart from each other, which is a nice touch. That doesn't really happen on the outside of the bag. There's a lot of zippers going on. They're very close to each other. It gets a little bit confusing, but they've done a great job inside of this U-shaped flap. So this mesh pocket here has a bit of 3D kind of functionality. There's some extra fabric on the sides, so you can stuff in items here that are a little bit larger. And then you have this highly elastic pocket here for longer, smaller items. And then a pen or pencil or stylus pocket on the left-hand side as well. Right above this U-shaped pocket, we have what eBags likes to call the forehead pocket, which is a bit of an odd name for a pocket. When on the empty side, this is a bit more of a vertical opening zippered pocket, but when fully packed out, the zipper is a bit more horizontal. Overall, nothing too crazy going on inside of this pocket. It's just a nice top drop pocket to stow items in as you're going through airport security or things that you just want quick access to. On the back side of the bag, we have this big U-shaped zipper for the laptop compartment. Now this is obstructed from the compression straps, so just note that you'll have to take these off if you wanna get full access to that zip. This is a good time to bring up that these are also security zippers, so they are self-locking. You'll see these little metal rings on the exterior of some areas of the bag. That means you can thread the zipper, this little hole in the zipper here, through that metal ring and lock these zippers. A nice handy little feature that is a theft deterrent. Now fully opening this laptop compartment, the overall compartment is about the entirety of the back panel of this bag. Inside there is a strap with an elastic keeper, 
We would totally like to see that elastic keeper on the exterior straps we mentioned earlier. And this little pouch is meant to hold your laptop. So it's a bit of a laptop hammock, so to speak. Opening up the compression buckles on the wearer's right hand side gives us access to that main compartment with two zippers. On this top flap here, we have a nice mesh divider pocket going on. This is great for flatter items, maybe t-shirts, socks and underwear, things that you just wanna keep tidy at the top here. Opposite of that, there's actually a lot going on in this main compartment here. And let's kick it off with this little pouch on the top. This is great for items that you wanna keep secure. So it's behind a zipper, behind another zipper, maybe your passport. Even toiletries can work well in here too because this is detachable via these buttons. So if you have liquids in here, it's easy to pull that out, go through airport security, and then just pop it back in. There's also this liner divider pocket in the middle that gives you kind of a left and a right hand side for your clothes. This is especially useful if you are not using packing cubes. We would really recommend using packing cubes, especially for a bag like this that has a very large opening. But if you don't want to, that's fine too. And this divider really helps. Also, it's easy to lay this divider flat if you don't wanna use it. Just unbuckle these little YKK buckles and you're good to go. Each side of the divider features these compression straps as well, and we like that you push down on them to release them. Ends up being pretty handy, especially if you have a lot of clothing and fabric going on as well. And lastly, we have these clips on the side that can help hold packing cubes or camera cubes or other e-bags accessories in place inside of this bag. There is just enough organization in this main pocket if you need it, but not quite too much for it to be overwhelming. At the time of this review, Mark and I have been testing the eBags Motherload Weekender Convertible for about two weeks between Detroit and Minneapolis, Minnesota, including one plane ride. Overall, our experience with this bag has been so-so. There's a lot of interesting thinking going on with the design, but the look and feel of the bag isn't really anything special. The list of features is very similar to other bags. However, in usage, we didn't feel like these features came together well in a holistic sense as we were testing. From a durability perspective, everything has been really great so far. There are a couple of loose threads, but other than that, nothing too large to report after two weeks of use. So wrapping it up with some pros and cons, there are some nice organization options, especially inside the main compartment of the bag. There are a couple of unique features we haven't seen in other bags. And lastly, there is good laptop protection, as long as you can fit your laptop within that hammock. On to some of the cons, it has a bit of a cheap feel overall. The zippers on the outside can be a bit confusing due to the large volume, and they're also blocked by the compression straps in a lot of areas. And lastly, these strap attachment points can stick into your back and the bag can fold in weird ways because of it, especially if you have a slightly wider frame like me. Overall, the eBags Motherload Weekender Convertible offers a handy list of features, but they are not delivered in a cohesive manner. People that have even a slightly wider frame will find the straps uncomfortable and sticking into their lower back. This could be a good bag if you're on a budget, but there are comparable choices out there for lower prices. So there you have it, our review of the eBags Motherload Weekender Convertible. We would love to hear what you think of this bag in the comments below. Thanks for keeping it here at Packhacker, your guide to smarter travel. We'll see you in the next video.